popular amongst Muslims, Islamic websites such as this one here gives the incorrect impression that before Islam, Arabia was an uncivilized, irrelevant, non-entity backwater of the world. And it is only because of Islam the Arabs became a relevance to the world. For example, it says in the article title, How was life in Arabia before Islam? It provides the answer by saying, quote, Before Islam, Arabia was in a very bad state. When they were blessed with Islam and became followers of this faith, the people of Arabia found themselves in their best state, for they became leaders of nations and the best nation that was ever brought forth for humanity. End quote. In order to determine the veracity of this claim, please view some of the previous videos covering this topic and continue to watch on. When post-Islamic Arabs stroke Muslims are contrasted with the state of pre-Islamic Arabs, a stark difference is observed. Pre-Islamic Arabs were known for their wealth, prosperity and honour. The ancient Romans designated the Arabian Peninsula into three main areas. These were Arabia Deserta, which means Desert Arabia, Arabia Felix, which means Happy or Prosperous Arabia, and Arabia Patria, which means Stony Arabia, that was ruled from Petra. Arabia Felix was so called due to its prosperity and wealth. This is because the Greeks and Romans viewed this area full of riches in agricultural products and spices. Here is a map of the three Arabias as defined by ancient Romans drawn by French cartographer Nicholas Sanson in 1654. Deserta is a small green areas in the north. The much larger yellow section is Arabia Felix. Arabia Petria are the pink areas. Professor Jan Ratso explains that the moniker Happy Arabia or Arabia Felix was originally designated for the southern shore of the Persian Gulf. However, it was used for the entire peninsula by the geographer Eratosthenes in the 3rd century BC. Its application to Yemen, South Arabia, was a result of the propagandistic version given by Augustus of the failed campaign to southern Arabia. Ptolemy also designated it for the whole peninsula rather than specifically for Yemen. Oxford-educated anthropologist William Rangeley writes in this study called The Arabs that the pre-Islamic Arabs were successful traders, often trading with India, Africa, Mediterranean and China. The full article can be found in this journal. Contrast the behaviour of modern-day Muslims, as explained in an early video, with that of the pre-Islamic Arabs who are known for their honesty. Due to known as being honest traders, ancient people traded with them and as a result they became very wealthy. This is explained in this research paper called Arab Byzantine War 629 to 644 AD, a thesis presented as part of a master's degree program. On page 12, it quotes ancient writers saying about the pre Islamic Arabs no one respected pleasures more than them that they had a high sense of honour which determines all the actions of the Bedouin is the basis of his morality and led the Arabs to become some of the most trusted merchants in the ancient world. On page 17 it says the Arabs caravan spices and incense to Mesopotamia, Egypt and the Levant beginning as early as 783 BC. By the 1st century AD they established a maritime link between Mediterranean, Arabia and India. The first century Greek historian Strabo writes as many as 120 vessels were sailing from the Egyptian coast to India. This burgeoning cross-cultural trade enabled the Arabs to become wealthy while still maintaining their largely nomadic lifestyle and culture. In reference to the aforementioned Indeed, it was the likes of ancient Greek historians such as Herodotus who said in the Histories Book 3, quote, The Arabs keep such pledges more religiously than almost any other people. And he went on to say, and that it was the only country which produces 
frankincense, myrrh, cassia, cinnamon, laudanum, etc. Another Greek historian, Diodorus of Sicily, author of Bibliotheca Historica, mentions a special type of gold the Arabs possessed called phylus. Mentioned in Book 2, Paragraph 50, quote, Mined in Arabia, the gold called phylus, which is not smelted from ores, as is done among all other peoples, but is dug out directly from the earth. It is found in nuggets about the size of chestnuts, and is so fiery red in colour that when it is used by artisans as a setting for the most precious gems, it makes the fairest of adornments. End quote. In Book 2, Paragraph 54, he says, quote, That part of Arabia as a whole which lies to the south is called Felix, but the interior part is ranged over by a multitude of Arabians who are nomads and have chosen a tent life. These raise great flocks of animals and make their camps in plains of immeasurable extent. End quote. So in conclusion, pre-Islamic Arabs are often denigrated by Islamic sources in order to elevate the status of Islam, when in actuality it could be argued that Islam has since denigrated the Arabs and those others who have accepted it as their religion. In the light of actual history, it cannot be said unequivocally that Islam advanced the Arabs. Pre-Islamic Arabs were known for their wealth and have been described as honest and prosperous by ancient Greeks and Romans. This fact needs to be contrasted with the state of Arabs post-Islam and the state of Arabs stroke Muslims in modern times. Mm -hmm.